<laughs> Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. I'm Victor Dangers, the hardest working man in comics. I'm Ryan Seymour, the most traumatized owner of Comic Town. <laughs> <laughs> if only you guys knew. The B-roll footage. Mm. No. Mm. No. Mm. no. 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 Um, okay. So, getting back into a comic book readership yeah. frame of mind. Um, what in the world, man? Publishing is on steroids? What is yeah. happening? Like, at some point, there's going to be no books setting the shelf because all of them are coming out all it's, the time. It, that's That's got to be a conclusive outcome because there is so much content. Mm -hmm. I literally read 10 books today. Yeah. I read 10. Like, we can only talk about so yeah. many. I went above and beyond. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was so much good stuff, though. There's like, so many cuts. That was so hard. But yeah. Like, it wasn't like, oh, man, this was this trash. Mm, get rid of it. No. Some amazing stuff. Um, okay. Where do you want to start? Because in our honorable mentions, we got one that's one the that same. One that is the same, yeah. And then we go all over the oh place. Oh, my gosh. Where all do you right. want to... There is something about the title, Cold Dead War, that feels Ryan-esque. And I'm just curious. Is it? Let me let me, let me me hip you just a little bit more, mm -hmm. okay? Creative team. Yes. <clears throat> we have George C. Romero. Done. Done. I knew, I knew I had you. I knew I had you. Uh, the penciler's name, this is no joke, the penciler's name is German Ponce. That, from the Connecticut Ponce. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> obviously. Um, and the color's name is Proto Bunker. So... Best book ever. Why you didn't read this? I don't know. Beyond don't know. me, man. Beyond me. But it's all good. Um, okay, an original story that, like, it weaves characterization super mm -hmm. quick. It's amazing. It takes place... Um, like parts like after World War II, during World War II, um, all kinds of goodness. Yeah. There is, I mean, when you say Romero, there's an assumption. Yeah. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Um, okay, it's true. But <laughs> how you get there mm -hmm. is wholly unique. Yeah. And dang it if this is not about to be one of the coolest stories of all time. Uh, we're, we're introduced to a captain who's got like this secret military pass and he lives in this small town. But when things are starting, yeah, he's the guy that you need because of his experience. And oh, oh, I can see this going so badly in the best way possible. I can't wait. Yes, Cold Dead. Yes, yes. Get this. Read this from Heavy Metal. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. Um, dope. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll keep with the. Warish mm. themes. Mm. Vietnam Horror Horror by Behemoth Comics. Uh, Rosie Coppola. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's black and white. It's I'm black and sold. white, and it's also on newsprint paper. Oh, so it's not like the high gloss stuff that we're having nowadays. I do like that. The art is really, really dark, really heavy. Mm -hmm. um, it takes place in Vietnam during the Vietnam War conflict, or, or yeah, whatever American, that's called. Yeah, American yeah. L. Yeah. So in this. There are these people that, you know, some of the U.S. soldiers are having these dreams about, you know, escaping the violence and, like, diving into the sea and, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. But they're all, all having the same dream. And in between finding out about that, mm -hmm. there's you know, a simple story about uh, what American forces are, are doing and how they might be war crimes. For, in this particular issue, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll see when you get to those panels. Uh, and them in a fire... It's dark. It's like if, if you had... Any illusions mm -hmm. of, I, I don't even know. It's like it's like dark even by my standards. Whoa. Where Whoa. there's just death. There's not a single redeeming character in it. And there is some level of supernatural that we're only getting glimpses of. So That's right up your alley, man. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. All yeah. Right. yeah. So if you want to see people getting shot, uh, falling into uh, tiger traps, uh, tunnels, um, yeah. Stuff that I can't say. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. That's, that's that's good times. Yeah, it's good times. Yay. Um, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take your bits of supernatural. Mm -hmm. Continue with Bitterroot number eleven. Um, finally coming back out. Yes. Yes. It is finally returning. And what's really great about this one? Okay. So we got Walker Brown Green all in the creative team. They do a really good job of kind of recapping mm -hmm. with this issue. So they're kind of telling you all the things that you need to know before they're about to set up the new stakes of this new story arc. And I think this is like super duper helpful. If anybody is doing a um, continued series, ongoing series, and maybe you've had a break, this is the best way to bring people back in because you are reintroducing characters, letting people know why they were important, what they've done, 
and the the world that you that they live in and it is so smartly done i really really like it so high marks for this one because this was a great way to get reintroduced to the series because i hadn't read it in a while oh it's been years right like so like to come back into it um and get the right you know intro i mean we're talking time jumps like but they fill it all in so well it was it was really well done so um i highly recommend this one right here this was good i had to read it for the culture and i'm so glad that i did so yes we'll go aftershock miss mm. katotic number five the end of the story arc okay uh Bolin, sharp sable uh, pontrelli it is all of your classic iconic lovecraftian things Love that. uh fish people tentacle monsters that you cannot fully understand because if you were to even gaze upon them you would lose your, your mind. mind yes uh body transfers uh I, I don't even know what the hell that is. And <laughs> Hungry? It, it, yeah. That's what it looks like. It's just not, nothing, <laughs> nothing good comes from that. It's like Hulk meets Overfiend. Mm-hmm, I, I don't mm-hmm. know. But it's really good. And it, and it wraps up really satisfactorily. Uh, I recommend if you haven't caught it, uh, pick it up and trade paperback. Uh, good stuff. That's solid. That's solid. All right. So the last of my deference, I did Teen Titans Academy number one. This was one I was really into, like from from a, like a speculator from a store owner perspective. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to get. Like how many to order from this one? It's hard to say, man. Um, Sheridan Sandoval, Tarragona Sanchez. Um, okay, when it comes to what it seems like they're setting up, mm-hmm. this is the DC Comics answer to Morrison's era of the X Men. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you're taking the established Titans. They are now teachers, yeah. and they have opened up the building to teach the next generation of heroes. That's really And cool. the different ways that those characters yeah. are going to interact. I was sold. Like, I'm not a big Titans guy. Yeah. This was fascinating. Like, it was nice. just an interesting concept. And having, like, these different groups, like, you see, like, the hierarchy of mm-hmm. characters within the DCU. Like, you know, you've got Nightwing and how people regard him. Uh, you've got this character, the Red X, yeah. that is you know being teased throughout this whole thing, and what that equals. That oh, there's some good stuff here. Like yeah. Tim is is breaking his foot off and kicking around on the ground, telling that story. Something nice in the black community, we would say he t- he stuck his toe in it. That's what we would say, and he did his whole toe. That's a compliment. It's not weird. It's <laughs> total, totally normal. Yeah, yeah. All right. So my last of the different books, Harley Quinn number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been digging a lot of the stuff that Stephanie Phillips has been writing recently. So we got uh, writing. Uh, we got Riley Rossmone, artist. Uh, Ivan Plas- Plaskia on colors. It's a really, really sketched out art style. It's super, super frenetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like more focused on the energy and the mm-hmm. movement and the and and the vibe the characters are given off than, than anything else, which works perfectly for the story. And w- what the story is is Harley. Is allowed back in Gotham after <laughs> after the, the the Joker War. Who thought that was a good uh, it, idea? It, it, Batman apparently. Oh, that right. Guy. So like she's squatting in, in Gotham, and she's trying to not not be a good guy, but mm-hmm. she's made a list. Like she she realizes that she's screwed over a lot of people. Like she's trying to atone. Yeah. <laughs> but like filter that through Harley's. Yeah, that's. It's yeah. It's not good. Like mm. part of part of atoning. To, to give you the a, a reference for how it's going to feel, part of the atonement <laughs> was attacking Killer Croc and it, like it, trying to get him to eat a cake. Wow. Yeah, gluten. Wow. Uh, they had gluten because he's. Like, gl- yeah, I can't. Ha- yeah, that's the. That's okay. what. Yeah, okay. that's what's going on. So yeah, yeah, it's amazing. That's, that's so colorful. I don't even. I don't it, even know. Right. Okay. All right. That's fine. Oh man. <sighs> Talk about colorful, and I don't even know. Ha ha. <sighs> Issue three. Um. <laughs> the only thing scarier than a clown is a mime. <laughs> okay, so W. Maxwell Prince, uh, Roger Landridge. Uh, we're not. We're not related. Um, and <laughs> I felt I needed to let that be yeah. known. Um, okay, this is essentially a silent issue. Yes, for reasons you'll never guess. Um, it is heartbreaking. Uh huh. And. I mean, like, when I say it's not funny, but it is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, 
I don't like the the artwork has like a real cartoony Mad yeah. Magazine kind of vibe to Very it. Very much so. Um, the, and it, it moves along the the visual storytelling because it is basically a silent issue. Uh, moves us along, keeps the story moving. You never once are like kind of like oh, what the heck happened in these two panels? Like it all makes sense. Great. And it's it you build up this story of these these characters and how they're interacting. Like you somehow make me care about them, and then you 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 do that. Yeah, yeah. Just to yeah, Charlie Brown and the football me. <laughs> like <laughs> okay, but the the Looney Tunes reference is absolutely the best yeah. thing in the world to me. Like there's a major Looney Tunes reference, and then the carryover of that, I'm like, is are they about to go? like low-key psycho here like is this is this a revenge <laughs> plot like what is this like what's happening this is it's kind of it's kind of crazy uh, um i enjoyed this just for the the sheer it, yeah craziness of it like it is it is so wild and random um yeah yeah the only thing that could have made it better is if there was some hand holding in that in that panel <laughs> That would have made it tragic, man. I mean, it already, so tragic. It is. I mean, it is, but like, that would have been like Boz Lerman's Romeo and Juliet tragic, <laughs> where like they actually see each other. Yeah. Spoiler: the movie came out like thirty years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, only like twenty-five. Okay, fine, but still, like, amazing. Yep. And you should watch it. Um, all right. So those were really good honorable mentions, right. man. But <laughs> there was, but there, there's got to be some winners here. It, yeah. Okay. Um. I think the order that we're going to talk about this This is, one's last. 100%. Like, like 100%. <laughs> okay. Let's start with Shadow Doctor. Yeah. I think that's the smart way to start. Yeah. Shadow Doctor number two, Aftershock Comics, Peter Calloway, uh, George's Genty. Um, okay. So you guys remember, this is like a, a biography of sorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Calloway is, is retelling the story, I think, of his grandfather. It, yeah. Who is a doctor right trained professional doctor finding himself in the you know depression era unable to be a doctor yeah. why because of racism right like it's it's the ugly yep. thing that just looms and people are afraid of this you know black doctor they don't want to you know they don't want to give him a chance yeah so he does the one thing that he knows he can and he reaches out to a friend it, i guess it, you could it, say yeah um who is one of the most unlikely individuals of all time? And this is apparently a true story. Yeah, which makes it so crazy. Al Capone. Yeah. Scarface. Yeah. Not yeah. like a man Scarface. Like no, old, no, old school. No, like, like OG real Scarface. Al Capone Scarface. Um, <clears throat> this is continuing their interaction, uh, building upon their relationship. And, I mean, it's it sets so many stakes up, which is really kind of cool. Like, you see... The history of where you know his grandfather came from yeah. and what the clear you know roots oh. of racism were for him. Yeah, like those first two panels are like nothing good is going to come from this. Good. <laughs> nothing good, nothing at all. Uh, oh, oh, brother, you have you have stepped into something that mm, mm-hmm, no, no. Um, okay, so Al Capone as a honest, sympathetic character, I never thought I would see right. And it, the, the weird thing is it kind of fits because he he himself was an immigrant, right? Mm-hmm. So oh, he, when he – so, yeah, because you're, you're looking at Al Capone and Al Capone's like the American dream. Right. Like it's not – it's it's your the, your desire, mm-hmm. your skills. You can you can become anything you anything want in America. Anything you want. All you got to do is try. Yeah. And that ethos, he's – I mean, he, it's what it's – what the, the common dream has always been. Yeah. It's what's been passed down. Is it true? Well, mm, details. But in this regard, like the notion of the American dream and what it means being something that is inspirational to a figure like Al Capone. Yeah. And he can see it for somebody else. Yeah. Like it wasn't just a matter of himself. Yeah. Like there is something that he says in here that I'm like corporate America could learn from Al Capone. Yeah. And I know that that's so terrible to say from a dude who ultimately gets arrested and convicted for tax evasion. Yeah. But there's, there it, are three pages where that conversation is taking place 
that I'm just like, it's the most humane thing I've ever seen. He needs to be a CEO. Yes. Like, I mean, he, he was. True. And it, and arguably a good one. Yeah. Like a really good one. Yeah. And, I mean, you talk about lessons of the past, man. Like, seriously, any CEO that reads what he said mm -hmm. and the rationale that he gives. Yeah. If you don't see, like, that's 100% what you should do, you're a fool. Yeah. You're an absolute fool. Um, It's crazy. Yeah. Like... He kind of Robin Hood himself. A little bit, yeah. Like how do you... Scarface? What? This is really, really good, right? I mean, again, when it comes to the premise, mm -hmm. there is something that is interesting, but it's not necessarily something that I would have read. If you're like, hey, a black doctor in the late 1920s, early 1930s um, has to borrow money for the mob because racism won't let, let him be a doctor. <laughs> well, believable. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But then reading it, I'm like... Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Like, like the 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 odd bits of complimentary racism. That are there. Yeah. Like Your people look good in this color. Like, uh, is that, is that like, um, but like, thanks? like the least racist thing. It in almost there. is, which yeah. is like the weirdest thing. Like, what a thing to actually say in 2021. It's like, hey, that's like the least racist thing you can. Yeah. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, but it's actually brilliant storytelling. Yeah. Like across the board. Um. Yeah, Peter's telling a great story. George's is always a fantastic artist, yeah. a legend. So, yeah, just and the way he's amazing. locked in now, one hundred percent. There's no way out for him. There so is even, no way. Even out. if he's like, you know, I, I don't, don't think I want to. No, no, no. It's too late. Yeah, it's too late. This was this was amazing. Only two issues in, so definitely nab that because um, it's great reading. Like, yeah, without question, great reading. And like all aftershock number ones, when you order a certain threshold, mm -hmm. it becomes trip cover returnable. So you're going to want to hit up your local shop and get that before. Yep. Before they send that back. Because yep. then you'll have to wait. Don't be waiting. Yeah. That's not the way. Something I almost couldn't wait for. Oh, oh God. All right. All right. So there are many alien comics that come out. Mm -hmm. Much like many of the alien xenomorph movies that come out. Mm -hmm. That just. Uh, what's it called in prison? Tossing salad. <laughs> but this one. I don't know if that's what they call it. I've never, I've never been. Um, it's okay. It's an so, acquired taste. On, so. on, oh, oh, oh. okay. <clears throat> You're absolutely right, though. There are some that are truly the dankest of danks yeah. and don't deserve the alien title ship that they carry. Now, this, you remember how good it was when when Marvel took over Star Wars? Like this is Marvel Star Wars for Alien. They did it again. And you know what? Why is it that they keep doing this to Dark Horse properties? Because of Fox, that's why. I mean, I, I know why, but they keep doing it. Um, big <sighs> shout out, uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson for writing this one. He had a big week this week, too. He also has an action comics book that came out. Oh, that's out right. Yeah, that I read that was really good. Um, and, and, like, I met him over a panel, mm -hmm. and I really dug, like, his whole energy, right? So, him getting alien, I was like, okay, I'm a huge alien fan. Yeah. So... I'm definitely going to be judging, but I have nothing errant to say about this. This is such a great move. Um, okay, maybe a little spoiler. If you were looking for Ripley, this is not that series. Yeah. This is extending the Alien franchise concept. Yeah. But it is not focused on her. It's so, the Alien universe. It's it's not. It's it's Mandalorian. It's not the Skywalker saga. So there happens to be a xenomorph, which is the thing that cross. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, mm -hmm. just the freaking oh my, like seeing the writing on the inside of the window. Yeah, oh my it's, god, oh it's so it takes it back to the horror of the first movie. Yes. Like, like we haven't seen the action of the second movie, mm -hmm. but the the cosmic existential dread of like the the dr dream sequences yeah. the yeah. There's a, a new character, which might people might be like, "Oh, yeah, that's first appearance of," but I don't, I don't like, I don't want a second appearance. That I don't want. Yeah, that's scary. Out. That's scary. I don't, I don't like this. Okay, so wait, wait. I think that this is after two. I could see that. Okay, so I think it's after two, and obviously, if you're following the Ripley story, you know, after two, she doesn't come back, so that's she's out, she's yeah. gone, which is why we're not focused on her. But <clears throat> there is something about this setup. Because this is not a character that I'm familiar with, yeah. which means that something else has happened. And 
I mean, the W the WY company, they are they're doing stuff. There's there's stuff that's happening, and they're always like there's some tricksters, man. Like they are, yeah, they're nefarious. Wailing Yukatani is not. They're shifty. They're very shifty. They're very shifty. Um, shout out to Salvador Larocca. I don't want to leave him out for oh this my one. Gosh, yeah. Um, as the artist, this was this was fun. Um, what yeah. I love is that the tone of this, the simple pacing of it, yeah, it's quiet. It's simple until it ain't. Yeah, and it's the story of a man who's mm-hmm. trying to reconnect with his family, mm-hmm. and that's that's the story. But like, that's the framework for this. Just there's horror. There's yes. this like we the viewers know that Waylon Yutani is sketchy. Yes, and there's a group of people who feel mm-hmm. the same way. Mm-hmm. So that's their story mm-hmm. and how that that factors in. Y'all wasn't ready for that knock knock. I was not no! ready for that at all. No, I like and and the way Salvador drew it. Yeah, like, like that's when I I was not. I flinched because I didn't want to get any blood on it. Like, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, and it's multiple panels where mm-hmm. you're just like, ah, mm-hmm. ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you definitely feel this one. Um, this is a great start. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can't, I can't say enough about it. It's such a good start, and oh, Cause it's got a young cover. It's beautiful. It's so adorable. It's so yeah. Oh God, the I way, love it. the way he draws those memories with like the stuff. Oh, oh, so oh. good. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. This, Pick in that a, up. In a normal week, this would be the book of the week. Easily. For us. Easily. But this week, <sighs> Senor Robert Kirkman, Esquire the Third, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Chris Burnham, mm-hmm. Scott M. Gimple, mm-hmm. and Nathan Fairbairn gave us the hope, gave us the change. The change. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> maybe the the uh, y'all gonna get sued. Y'all gonna get sued. <laughs> oh, y'all gonna get sued. Oh my god. Um, but please don't see snort assist with this action. Um, okay. <clears throat> die, die, die. Number fourteen. Which I've been off the die, die, die train for a little while. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. But when when your cover is <laughs> President Obama mm-hmm. with two mechanized fists mm-hmm. that say hope and change. I, you, I mean. You gonna flip through that book? Yeah, and and the the title, can't wait to see Barack Hussein Obama mm, these aliens up. I'm in. Yes, please. Even if I'd never read any of the previous thirteen issues, I'm reading that one. I'm in. I'm reading that one. And try the, to keep that out of my hands. I dare you. And the thing is, it's so like if you've been reading, it builds up to this, and you're like, all right, cool. I know what's going on. If you haven't been reading, it doesn't matter. It's so bonkers. That it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> What I want is, <clears throat> I want an audiobook version. <laughs> but it has to be someone doing like a very impressive, like Barack Obama impression. Like, get Jordan Peele yeah. to do the voice of Barack Obama on this one. If, I want to know if Barack has read this. Does, does he get a copy? I, I would hope. I hope so. I would I hope. I really do. Because um, he deserves a copy. Um, the idea of what the presidency means. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, does this explain what happened to Joe? Like, when he tripped up the steps, is this an aftermath kind of thing? Like, maybe. Like, maybe. Man. Like, he's still a little bit gimpy from man. the. Man. That's messed up. That's messed up. <laughs> it's so exciting. There. Okay, so there's a two page spread here. It's the single greatest thing ever drawn. It definitely is. Um, Sist- my challenge to you guys. Is how many can you name? That's the question. How many references can you pick out out of what you see? Because um, there are a ton, like so, so many. It's not even funny. Whoever can name the most references, I think, deserves a prize of some sort. We'll figure it out. Don't even know what it is. Yeah, but yeah. Whoever can name the most, you get you get a prize of some sort. Because this is this is crazy. It's hysterical. It's hilarious. Because like. <laughs> Is somebody going to complain? Like, I mean, who? Who's going to complain? Like, you're going to complain about getting shouted out? No. Right? Like, I mean, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, which one makes me giggle the most? It might All be. Of them. It might be that one. That one's good? That's that's, that's, that's an iconic movie. Right? Like, 
Uh, Hilarious. Like, I'm still, that one cracks me up. Cause, yes. Because it's a force ghost. I mean. <laughs> which makes it. And it <laughs> I mean, what do you say? Like, how do you argue this? This is, it's bloody. It is over the top. This is not for the chillins, okay? Yeah. Keep this out of the hands of the young folk. It ain't for them. Uh, it might not even be for the old folk. It might not like, even be for the old folk. Like, <laughs> it, it's so crazy. Yeah. If, if you're a subscriber to a one letter conspiracy theory thought process, this is not a comic book. No. This is the truth. No, is the and truth. you should be afraid. And and it's better than any conspiracy that you've ever come up with. It's so it's this, this issue is better than you. Okay? I'm gonna say it. It's it's amazing. This one, book of the week. Yeah. Hands down, without question. My own, that's my, the one. My only complaint is yeah. I think President Obama's in better shape than that. I agree. Like, I definitely agree. Because he looks he looks a little paunch. Yeah. A little paunch. Yeah. Saw the dude drain a three pointer with in dress shoes. So you know, like that ain't that, that's that ain't, now. Listen, you think Michelle is gonna allow him to get out of shape like that? No, no, not even, nope. not even. It's not happening. So that's we'll we'll say that those were some liberties that they took to, to kind of to make it more more believable. Yeah, 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 yeah. To to kind of underdog him. That's what it was. Well, no, no, shoot, it makes more like because the dude's in shape. Think about it. Why would he have to maintain such great shape? This is why. This is why. This is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's true. I mean, when he said, you know, put that back in and let me keep going, I'm like, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's my president. That's him right there. <laughs> Without question. Yes. Oh. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, my God. That was fantastic. Die, die, die. This is <sighs> so good. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed all the books that we talked about. If you enjoyed this episode... Click that thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Get that get that like up in there. We need that goodness. If you want some more of this action every week, hit subscribe and the bell. Because that will let you know once we drop it. It's usually Wednesdays. Sometimes it's a Thursday depending on how. It's something, something else. Yeah. Diamond's the devil. Yeah. 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 So. But when they're not, we're here for you. Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Boom. Yep. Oh, my God. It's so good. Right? It's so good. I shouldn't. I, I think that, that could have been the only book I read this week, and I would have been satisfied. Been fine. If I had read that one just ten times, I would have been happy. Yeah. That was just, it's so brilliant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's it's yeah. so freaking cool. Oh, my God. Okay. Till next time, you guys. We'll see you. I'm Victor Dangerous, hardest working man in comics. Ryan Seymour. Peace. <laughs>